Hello and welcome to another video and this is my first impressions on the public test server we have the rebalance phase two so we all tap here we're into the um, sort of patch notes for this public test and there's a few key points that we're going to go over I'm going to show you these notes I'm going to give you my impressions on them I'm going to show you some spreadsheet warrior and how these things are affected and sort of some ideas for them and then some in-game examples so first off we have these sort of main points here we have an overall increase for health of equipment we have the reduction of maximum range for clan lasers and also a single uh, inner sphere laser that they didn't list but I'll get to that in a moment adjustments to IS and clan heatsink values extreme fundamental changes of ECM and adjustments to information warfare and uh, important to note for the purposes of this test phase all mech and weapon quirks have been removed so they haven't balanced variants versus each other they haven't balanced clan versus is so don't make any comments on how or no it's not balanced between them because that wasn't the point so uh, these are these uh, five points here are the ones that they want to look at with this test and let us scroll down and look at some of these specifics so again just listing that all quirks have been removed and there are only a few quirks that are related to sensor range so if we go back into the game go into the mech lab go select mech and hover over anything you can see that mechs have a sensor range quirk you see plus 300 on the gray death um, grid iron plus 300 that one's plus 300 this the ice ferret is plus 200 you know plus 100 on the shadow cat you know that's the sort of feeling to it that, that's basically the only quirks that are on the test server at the moment all the modules are going to stay the same there's no changes to module slots but here is the big change with ecm and i'm just gonna i'll zoom in a bit here make this easier for you guys to read hopefully ECM radius has been decreased to 90 meters down from 180. So what used to be the radius of 180 for your bubble is now the diameter, which is big. So that's a, a lot of effective area that's being brought down. So your ECM, you're going to have to be closer to the group. Your groups has going to have to be balled up a little bit tighter. And you're not going to be able to give ECM coverage to as many mechs, but also ECM has gotten a major uh, nerf in the sense where before you could run your ECM, you could stand off in the distance, and unless a person had a counter, a tag, narc, bap, B, um, PPC, ECM encounter, they could not get a lock on you unless they got really, really close. And now ECM no longer prevents that happening. So it no longer prevents lock-on uh, for mechs. So you can still lock on to an ECM carrier. It just takes longer. It delays the amount of time it takes to achieve lock-on by three seconds. So what that means, the ECM guy comes out. He's within your normal sensor range. He's not going to be picked up immediately, but after three seconds, there's his red Dorito, and you can lock onto him, and you can fire missiles at him. And that's really awesome. I, I, th I really think that this is how ECM uh, should have been done in the beginning. It should have a, a function that was similar to this a long time ago. It's just been too strong for too long, but it's really cool. I really like this change, but I do have a couple ideas that would make it cooler and sort of more flavorful. And while this is a huge nerf from what it was. I give it a couple tiny little things that well, I give it a tiny little buff that I'll discuss in a moment here. Going down, target lock decay is overridden by the normal ECM counters. So, equipment and weaponry. The health of all equipment has been increased from 15. Uh, Increased to 15 up from 10. This basically means that all your ammo containers, all of your heat sinks, all of your weapons, except for a couple like the Gauss and the AC-20, which already had um, different health values, 
are moved up to 15. And this is this is an important number going from 10 to 15 because it means that your piece of equipment can't be taken out with a single crit from a 10 damage shot. So an AC 10 or a PPC can no longer take out a piece of equipment with a single crit. And that's really important. So that means that equipment that are in exposed sections will last longer. And overall, that's awesome. So now we have some changes to the heat sinks. And I believe there's a couple um, mistypes on here. Anything that should be doing with cooling rate should be point the number. Um, as you see down here, the clan double heat sink cooling rate is 0.15 and 0.14, where the cooling rate up here is 1.1. Um, I, I believe this, this here should just be moved over one, so we're going to ignore that and assume they mean 0 0.11 and 0 0.1, because that would actually make sense. That's just a typo. Sing Inner sphere single heat sinks have gotten a buff across the board. Their uh, cooling rate has increased by 10% from to 0.11 up from 0.1, and their capacity has been increased to 1.1 up from 1. And so this one's correct when it comes to capacity. It's just the cooling rate that's the the typo. So heat sinks single heat sinks from the inner sphere 10% buff across the board for both the uh, cooling rate and the capacity. That's cool. It, it's it's improving single heat sinks. That will probably improve some of the stock builds a little bit. We'll see. I still believe that double heat sinks might be the still the go-to, but I have to do a little bit of math on that. Inner sphere double heat sinks, their capacity has gone up, so the amount of heat you can hold before shutting down from 1.4 to 1.5. And on uh, clan double heat sinks, this is the interesting one. The cooling rate, the amount of heat you can dissipate per second, has gone up. So they've actually received a buff from 0.14 to 0.15. That's pretty awesome. But the capacity, the amount of heat you can hold at once before shutting down, has been decreased from, from 1.4 to 1.2. I really like this change. It basically means that, okay, your clan mech, you're going to be a little bit more heat efficient than your inner sphere counterpart, but you can't hold the heat. You can't alpha as large as an inner sphere mech possibly could. I really like it. I, I've played a couple matches on the test server so far, and I noticed it a few times. Like I could fire my lasers and I go, whoa, I spiked up to 10% more than what I'd usually spike, but wow it's going down really quickly hmm, okay uh, really noticeable on mechs that have uh i'd say about 18 19 heat sinks i believe that's the math for um this increase of cooling rate to basically give you a free heat sink and then when it gets to i think low 30s for heat sinks so say on a warhawk you're getting an extra two heat sinks in of cooling rate equivalency so i like it but here's a here's the doozy change maximum ranges for all clan lasers have been reduced by 40 percent and before we go on to this let's go do some spreadsheet warrior because this is what uh, i i need to explain this in detail it's all clan lasers and a single inner sphere laser the er large laser so let's go through it Currently, this is what we have. We have our range here and our max range. Our max range is this optimal range times two. So it's really simple. 200 optimal range, that's where you're going to do your full five damage from an ER small. 400 is your max range, and that's where the linear fall off of the damage will reach zero. It's really simple. It's the exact same across the board for both whoa, bounced around there, for both uh, technologies. But now let's go look at the um, stuff from the public test. And I put in two uh, more things here. We'll get to this one in a moment, 
not talking about it yet, but we're looking at this is the fall off. So if we look back here, their maximum ranges for all clan lasers have been reduced by 40%. And this is for the maximum range, not the optimal range. So for our ER small laser, like I said before, the optimal range is 200. That's not going to change. It's always going to be 200. But instead of 400 being another 200 on top of the optimal, it is now only going to be 60% on top of the optimal. So I have this 60% because it's reduced by 40. That means it is 60% of just the math of it means that an ER small laser optimal range of 200 and instead of a max range of 400 now has a max range of 320 and this formula here is just the optimal range plus the optimal range times this max percentage variable that I have in here so you can see what this does for all of the the lasers and across all of clan tech you have this max now being at 60 percent and for one is the er large it being at 60 percent as well and i am so happy that they did that as well the they put that er large laser at 60 percent compared to having it 100 percent because i was like i was reading these these patch notes last night before it went live and i was going oh i really hope that they don't do that because if we set this back to 100 percent you can see that the ER large laser for the inner sphere side would actually have a longer range than the ER large laser for the clan side. And that just doesn't make sense in my mind. So I'm super glad, let me just revert that back, that they put it 675 to 1080 now. And I can back that up with observations in the game. So say I go into any inner sphere mech we go into the energy weapons, we go to our ER large laser and we click on it and we see our 675 and 1080. So that is how that math is being uh, figured out. Now let's go back and reselect my Storm Crow because I want to use it for an example later. So what this basically does is makes it so ER and Clan Pulse lasers, so all of ER lasers, Clan Inner Sphere and Clan Pulse lasers, go out a bit further than their inner sphere counterparts. So large pulse laser in the clan is in the inner sphere is 365. Large pulse laser in the clan is 600. But they're going to drop off much faster. So while this large pulse laser in the clan should be 1200, way longer than the inner sphere large pulse, it shoots down to 960 instead with the inner sphere large pulse going 365 to 730. So in that sense, it sort of balances them out a little bit. They can shoot further, but once you go past that range, you're getting diminishing returns much, much quicker, where inner sphere lasers, you can shoot past your standard range a bit further, and you can keep up your damage at a longer distance. I am 100% in support of this change. I like it. I really like the fact that they did it with the inner sphere ER large. If they hadn't have done it, I would have suggested it. So I love this change. Uh, you could even make this uh, more aggressive if you wanted to. I, I have this in a variable so I can change it. You could set it down to 50% for all I care. I just think that kind of change is really good. I really like it, but that is the math behind it. Let's see here and back to the notes. Going down, the targeting reticule will no longer flash when a hit is detected on a mech that is not locked. Whew, I don't like this change at all. Uh, getting that target reticule flash is very important to know if you're dealing with a latency issue or a hit detection issue and stuff like that. And you're not always going to get the targeting reticule. So I really don't like, um, I don't like that change. We can hop into the testing grounds here and hopefully show that off really quick. Hop into Frozen City Night, uh, just a good one because it has a couple mechs immediately as you spawn. And I'll show you guys, if I lock the cicada over there, but then choose to shoot the commando that's right here, I'm not getting any reticule flash. However, 
if I then choose to shoot the guy that I have locked, we see the new reticule. We see it have that additional um, effects to it, the extra little sort of hit markers from like Call of Duty or whatever it would be show up, and it changes uh, color slightly. But that's only if you have locked on it. So now I'm going to switch my lock. I'm going to switch to locked on the commando and aiming at the cicada. No target uh, indicator. No hit indicator. I really don't like this change. If you hit a mech, there should be a hit indicator. You're not always going to have a lock, but you need those hit indicators to know that you're hitting something and to test for latency issues. All right. Also, this is a big change. Lasers will not do full damage when striking a mech that is not target locked from a range greater than 60% of the laser's maximum range. Okay, that's a little bit of a um, interesting statement, but let's break it down with an example. I'm just going to reset this match so that the, all the, those two mechs there are fresh again, because I'm going to use them as target dummies to show off what this does. And we're going to want to pay attention to the weapons uh, panel in the bottom right and the range of the lasers that I have. So I have five uh, medium pulse lasers and normally as you can remember from here a medium pulse is going to have a range of 330. I have a targeting computer and a range module so that's why it's 370. If I go and I target a mech and look at them. We look now, we're at 370, so everything's fine. However, if I switch my target, my, my lasers now have a range of 222. When I'm not aiming at the mech that I have targeted, I have reduced range. I don't believe that this is a... I, I want to believe that this is a bug. It seems silly. This this whole change seems silly. That for some reason, if I press R, my lasers just magically get like 150 more meters of range. What? So I'm completely against this, uh, you know, random, unless you lock, you're not going to do full damage thing. I'm completely against this. Your lasers should just be your lasers. So for more information of sort of how this changes it, let's look at an example of shooting that cicada in the back. So I'm locked on the commando right now, but I'm aiming at the cicada. So I have 222 meters of range. The mech is 450, 453, 452, around there away. I'm going to shoot into its right side with my five lasers. No hit marker and reduced range. I'm now going to target it and then shoot it in the other side torso after I've targeted it. I get my hit marker, but now look at the top right. Look at the damage readout. I didn't move. It's basically the exact same, like one meter range difference. But you can visibly see the damage difference between the left and the right torso on that mech. So it is, because of that reduced range, it's reducing my ability to do damage to that mech. I think that's completely silly. Should not happen. Also, it seems like it's a bit of a bug. If I am locked on that mech, but then just shooting beside that mech, so say right here, I'm at 222. It's only when I am hovering over that mech, when I'm aiming directly at it, that I have full range on my lasers. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it should be set up or how the system is exactly should be working, but I'm against the whole system to start with. So if this is a bug or not, or if this is intended or not, doesn't matter. Just get rid of this whole system. It is silly. Moving on. The reticule mechanics when the target is locked, the reticule will change color and change shape. So it's sort of like, like I showed you there. The sort of Call of Duty sort of hit markers when you see and that it will change color ever so slightly. It's only a very, it goes from 
sort of light blue to lighter blue. It's not really a big change, so I would definitely change this to back into it gets those hit markers and it changes to red. I really need that to change to red. There needs to be enough of a contrast change that I can see that there is a hit. Uh, just that needs to come back. Also, on a point about this, I played a couple matches and I just remembered this. I dropped artillery that I saw hit, but I had no one locked, and I didn't see hit markers. I need to see hit markers if my artillery is hitting something. That's just another point. Um, goes again into the thing of we should always see hit markers. Okay, next is sensor range. Mechs start with a baseline range of 500 meters, and that's for assaults. And then they basically go up from there. So 100 ton assaults like the Dire Wolf are going to have 500 meters. But then as you go up in, uh, as you go down in weight, as you get smaller and smaller, your sensor range will go higher and higher until very light mechs are going to be seeing out to a kilometer, a kilometer and 10 meters. No, not 10 meters, kilometer and 100 meters sort of things. It's okay. But again, I think this system is a little bit of backwards. So... Let's just show off what the system is now, what they're testing, and then I'll show off how I think it's a little bit backwards. Let's just pop out here and then jump into the Dire Wolf, as it is one that has the 500 meter range. Whoop. Into my completely meta wolf. With my two Goss, two ERPPC, because I will continue to run it until they fix heat scale. And we're just going to back up a little bit, and we can see the cicada there, just over 500 meters, 501. We take a step or two forward, the cicada comes into view, and we can target it. Now, they have set, like they say here, uh, the target acquisition rate is zero seconds. So everybody's getting instant target acquisition. So they're, they will probably quirk these to be chassis and variant based in the future but for now it's the exact same as in live client where you just get it instantly and the uh, acquisition rates are only being affected for, by ECM so that's all that they're testing so you can see as I back up my direwolf here and I go over 500 meters I lose my lock I cannot lock that cicada out there I can still shoot it and I can still kill it and again, there's another weird inconsistency. I got a hit marker there, but I didn't have him locked. It's just weird. But now we can go on to back into the mech lab, and we can show some of the uh, variable sensor ranges as you go up. So the Dire Wolf is 500, and it's uh, 500 meters, and it's the 100 ton big guy. But then, say the Awesome, it says 600, so you can see a little bit farther. You go up through the heavies, go the the popular ones, the Timberwolf 600, the Mad Dog 600, the Grasshopper 700s, we're starting to get 700s, 600s for the clan, so same weight for clan versus IS, we're getting um, less sensor range on the clan side and more sensor range on the IS side. Uh, just very slight changes there. We keep going up, we'll go into the mediums, you know, Griffin, 900, Shadowhawk, 900, uh, Shadow Cat, 700, uh, just some random numbers. I'm sure you can get on the public test and look at them yourself, where you can see how they're going up. We get into the s scouting lights, the Arctic Cheetah, at 1.1 kilometers, <laughs> quite nice. Same thing with Firestarter, the Jenner. Kit Fox, Adder, it looks like they're all at that 1.1 kilometers. The Locust, 1.2. Yeah, it looks like some of the sort of lower tier um, IS mechs are at 1.2 kilometers comparatively. So, that's fine. I mean, it's not how I would do it. I would go the other way around. I would have basically take the sensor range value of the light and give it as how far away they're detected to an assault. So I would rather it be that 
instead of assaults being blind, is that assaults were bright. Everyone could see assaults. So instead of a sensor range, you have a detected range. So an assault would have a 1200 meter detected range. That means every single mech out there from light to assault could see that mech at 1200. So instead of individual mechs in the team being able to see different distances, it's the, you, everyone can see that uh, the Wolf at 1200. They can't see the Arctic Cheetah or somebody beside it at 1200 because that mech needs to be closer. I explained this in my, um, what I would change information warfare, that it should be equivalent to sort of the size. So if, uh, like a, it wouldn't be exactly these numbers, but an Atlas or a Direwolf, a hundred tons at a kilometer, it should be a mech that is say one half that size, a 50 ton mech should be viewable at 500 meters because it's half the weight, half the distance, and they would be same sort of coefficient. That's how I would do it instead. Again, you can look at my, um, what I would change information warfare for a full explanation of that. But again, they had this same system in the last public test and they're still going with it. It's going to be okay, but I think it would be better the other way. As well, what you can do with ECM and stuff like that, I'll leave that to you guys if you go watch the um, my information warfare video. <laughs> we'll get into this one. Back onto track. Uh, then the target information sharing is based on the difference between the target and the first teammate, um, then the distance between that teammate and all other teammates. This is a little vague. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by this. I do know from the last test it basically meant your sensor range. So I think this so that if a, a mech that had a really long sensor range was sort of standing in the middle of the team, they could act as sort of a relay tower and they could transfer around target information sharing. It basically means that if you have a, a light for spotting that goes all the way behind the enemy and is really far away from your group, they can't share information with you because they're too far away. I'm not sure these exact numbers. It would be great to see an example and see a diagram for this, but they haven't supplied it. So that is sort of all the information you need to know about this public test. Go on, try it out, give your thoughts on the sensor range, the ECM, the lasers, the, uh, the multiple changes to lasers, the heat sink stuff, and the target information gathering information uh, stuff for it. All right, so that's all the details, but now into some of my opinions. And I'm going to cut away to uh, a couple matches that I played on the test server. So I really like a lot of these changes. I love the uh, maximum range reduction on clan and ER lasers. So with the IS ER large laser. I love that. I <laughs> truly wish that I was in a bit earlier. Um, again, I've stated what I said about the sensor range, how I think it should be flipped around. But what I'd really like to talk about is ECM and how that could be changed. I think they've almost over nerfed it. It's so fine line of over nerfing. It's, it's, because once you get into the battle and you've seen the opponents and stuff like that and everyone's gotten a lock and they've been out for more than three seconds, it just, the battle is exactly the same. I have actually seen a lot of LRMs on the test server in the few games that I played and that's kind of cool that LRMs are actually a thing. I haven't seen LRMs in the uh, live client in a very long time, at least how, when I and how I play. One thing that I'd like to bring in for ECM is the concept of it being a, a piece of equipment that blocks information rather than locks. So I really like the idea that you can, you can look, if you look long and hard enough on an ECM mech, you'll get a lock and you can fire missiles at it. That's great. But I don't like the fact that there is still 
the mech loadout information, the mech's call number and call sign and pilot and information and stuff like that displayed. Now I'm going to steal from the ECM proposal by Spiral Face and a, a little mock-up that he did for it called the sort of hard, so hard sensor lock and soft sensor lock. And you can see an example of it right here. Hard sensor lock is you have your targeting box, your targeting Dorito, you have the 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 max call sign, so the alpha, bravo, you have its percentage health, you have its range, you have what the pilot's name is, you have the mech type. I would get rid of all of that if the mech was under ECM. I would just have the targeting box, ECM indicator, and the Dorito. That would be it. That's the one thing he's missing from his little um, picture example here is the on the right side, I would have the Dorito just so that you can see that you've locked onto it. Because then you can still lock and you can still fire your weapons and you can still fire your missiles at it and all that kind of stuff. Missiles would work fine, but ECM would become a method of disrupting communication and information instead of just denying it. So if you had a bunch of cataphracts on your team, like the cataphract in this example, you could rotate them off the same position and people wouldn't be able to tell if you're under ECM um, if that cataphract was a different one because they wouldn't have a letter insignia to them. They wouldn't be able to say cataphract alpha, cataphract bravo. They would just be able to say there's a cataphract. I think that would be an amazing change for ECM. You give it a tiny little bit of a buff while not getting rid of anything they're trying to do now with allowing LRMs and all these others like being able to lock on and allow LRMs to fire at mechs under ECM. Also, one last point is if they're going to do this kind of information warfare stuff, they really need to look at um, radar deprivation. This module is too strong. Radar deprivation. You When you move out of line of sight, you instantly lose lock. It's too good. Because they showed you a bunch of times in the last public test that they're going to have mechs that had increased uh, target acquisition decay. So that you could hold on to your lock for a monstrous long time. Like I made a Warhawk that with the module had like a 10 and a half second uh, decay to its lock on time. That's cool. But radar deprivation completely gets rid of that. So if they ever, ever want to bring that quirk set back in and allow people to stack radar decay and that be their thing, they absolutely need to address radar deprivation in this patch, in this pass. Radar deprivation should be a minus percentage rather than getting rid of instantly. Minus 50%. Throw it out there and give that a try. I think that it would be extremely powerful still, but it wouldn't completely invalidate a lot of those mech builds that could happen in the future. Anyway, those are my ideas on the public test. Go out there and try it and then submit um, your feedback in the forums. Uh, and also, you have like 2 million MC and 2 billion C bills. Play with mechs that you don't have. Buy heroes that you don't have. Test things out. See what everything works and leave your feedback. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good hunting.